Are you tired of getting caught stealing art? Can you don't? Are you sick of your fans exposing you? He didn't trace it. Now he did. Look at this layover. Well, no more. In this video, I'm gonna teach you how to steal art without being a dick. What's up guys, Lucas here, I'm a concept artist and illustrator working for video games and this channel is all about art and art related content so if that's something that you like, consider subscribing. Guys, I never work without a reference, artists, photos, whatever. That means that in all my works, and I say all of them, there is something stolen, being the pose, the light, the color or something. In this video, I'm gonna tell you how I use references to steal from different artists and learn a little bit from each one of them. But also, I will tell you why using reference is so important and why it doesn't matter if you're a professional or a beginner, why you should not shy from using it. Let's get to it. So the process usually starts with me looking for a main reference. Main reference, I mean something that really sparks my attention and makes me want to start painting. In this case, I went to Sean Archer's profile in Instagram because his photos are, are beautiful. Nothing to do with the naked girls. It's just that I like his compositions, okay? So I found this beautiful photo of Nadine Krieger in his profile with really nice pose and lighting, which are the two main things that I look for in a main reference because being it colors or, or style or anything else I can change after the fact, but really pose and lighting are the two main things that I want to, to nail from the main reference. Now there is this book out there named Still Like an Artist from this guy named Austin Cleon that I have not read myself but a couple of friends have read it and they really recommend it. One of the main points of the book being that if you take all your influence for, from this single reference people will call you a thief but if you take a little bit from here and a little bit from that suddenly your work would be original. The reason being that nobody can tell where did you get all your pieces from. So instead of just simply relying on this single reference, let's go and look for more of them. So I jumped into ArtStation to my likes because there is where I just collect all the things, all the art that I that I admire from, from other people. And I'm sure that you have something like that. And here's what I recommend you to do to be able to use that collection appropriately is don't go there and try to find one single reference that, that encompasses everything that you want to do, but go there and selectively say like, okay, I really like the way that in this painting or this artist uh, makes, for example, his or her colors, or I love the way that this artist makes or draws noses. And that way you will end up collecting a little bit from here and a little bit from that and refining your painting and then therefore your style into something more complex, being the fusion of all the guys that, that you like. So in my case, I ended up choosing Samuel, Samuel, Samuel Joan. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm sorry, dude. I don't know how to pronounce your name. Uh, Samuel Joan on the way that, that he stylizes his faces. Miore or Mayori. Uh, again, I'm sorry. Miore. On the way that she paints hair and Ilya Kushinov on the way that he chooses his saturated colors, at least, at least in this painting. Even though uh, when you see the final painting, you'll realize that I didn't use his color palette at all. So once that we have everything ready, it is time for us to dive into the painting. Now let's get something clear. This is not a tutorial where I will explain you my painting process. This is focused on how do I use references. And this really applies to any process that you have on your paintings, really. But also because I already made a, a tutorial on how I make my paintings in Procreate, my portrait paintings in Procreate. And that I will link uh, up there in the card for you guys to go and check it out if you are more interested in the details of the process, okay? While I'm starting my sketch, I'm not trying to copy the reference. That is something really important for me. I'm trying to extract from the reference the things that I really like or that, that sparked my attention when I saw the, the picture. And those are, for example, her, her expression, her facial expression, the way she just slightly opens her mouth. Those are things that I really try to exaggerate and, and 
put in my painting, okay? At this point, I'm trying to also fuse all those things with the way that Samuel draws his faces or, or the structure of his face. I can see that he really goes for a downward triangle to, grab, to try to make that little chin, the little mouth, the little nose, and make those eyes really big. So that's something that that I try to combine with the main reference to have a sketch that that I like. Okay, while well, the painting happens there in the background, let's take a moment and talk about why using references is so essential to any artist. Nothing is original, okay? Absolutely everything that you create or admire, being that from any any artist that you admire or whatever that you you like, being that music, sculpture, dance, painting, whatever, is not original. It's just a combination of several things that already existed before. This happens because unfortunately our minds are limited to not being able to recreate the things that I, we have not seen. Just look at Avatar. Not that Avatar, but this avatar, okay? It is a multi-million dollar movie talking about guys that come to a new planet to invade and fight with the natives to collect the resources. That's basically the plot of Pocahontas with Smurfs. Cuphead, a massive hit of a video game, just took the simple mechanics of a platformer and mix them with the beautiful aesthetic of the of the animation of the 30s and boom success and everything really everything that you see and you admire is just the combination of two or more things that the creator decided to combine and create something new not only with entertainment products but also with artists our own aesthetics our own styles are just just that are just the, the fusion of different artists that we have around us and we decided to copy your favorite artists as well as mine have a style that is really just the average of their favorite artists and they, it goes up there at infinitum until we realize that the only original original creation is is the real world so creativity or originality is nothing else than undetected plagiarism. If you take too much from a single source, you will end up being called a copycat of that artist. Or worse, you will be forgotten in the sea of artists that go and regurgitate the same anime girl. The answer to this problem is of course not avoiding references, but the opposite. Grab as many references as you can, never work without one. It doesn't really matter if you think that you can produce your next masterpiece without looking at a reference, it re really doesn't matter because see, if you, if you work without a reference, you will find yourself just exercising or putting in practice the things that the things that you already have in your head but if you every time that you paint you have a reference in front of you you will find yourself looking at it and learning a little bit from that reference every single time that you paint that's why it's so important that you go and use as much real life reference as possible so embrace those references and one very important thing that I heard that, that it was mentioned in this book, Still Like an Artist, is to try to not only copy the outward appearance of your influence, try to go a little bit deeper and ask yourself why did the artist make these decisions that made the painting that you like or what do you even like from this painting let's look at samuel's case i suppose that when he was doing that downward triangle shape for the head he was thinking of making the eyes bigger so that the character could look cuter the same goes for miore right she she wanted this very flowy look for the hair where the the hair looks the, or the hair strands look like like pieces of paper, kind of like a flat thing. And that's a really, really nice look and makes the character look like kind of surreal or, or ethereal. And and yeah, that that's really not happening in my painting, but but do not question me or my artistic abilities, okay? Let's let's just say that it's because my character doesn't have long enough hair. Yes? You can see that the painting now it's close to done and you really cannot trace the painting back to the originals, right? And that is because of course I made a lot of changes on my painting but maybe, maybe you will be able to, to I don't know, relate the original picture, the main reference, the model to my painting 
if you really compare them to but but hey if you're really trying to hide that just just flip the picture and nobody will find it i also feel that one of the reasons why my painting really doesn't look like the references is that i failed with my main goal that was actually following the references because i was making this painting for for this video because i ended up going to my usual style but we could also say that i did my work really well and that I took so little from each reference that now you cannot say from which one did it come from, right? Guys, try this thing out. I, I'm sure that that you will you will learn a lot of new things from from trying out this this technique or this way to, of approaching references. I can tell you that I do this for almost every painting now, and I find myself learning. Every time that I do it, I learn a little bit from each artist that I choose, and I always choose different artists. I think it was Paulo Picasso or maybe Steve Jobs or just somebody said, good artists copy, but great artists steal. At the end of the day, guys, just remember, credit your references. Question, guys, who or what is your main influence in your art? Mine, I'm pretty sure that is anime. When I was a kid, I used to, to draw so much Dragon Ball Z and then Naruto. I just love those things. I was, I was really a freaky otaku boy when I was a kid. But hey, I owe my career to that, right? That's it for me, guys. Thank you very much for watching this video till the end. Leave me a like if it was useful in any way. And of course, subscribe if you want more art-related content. I'll see you guys in the next video. Bye.